jump to the sky turns to a rider kick. Hey everyone, I'm Colonel Gura, and today we're taking a look at one of my favorite vintage GI Joe vehicles of all time. It is the 1983 Sky Striker. It was also sold in 1984 and 85, and then it was discontinued in 1986. And man, I am so happy to have this thing. These guys usually go for like $200 or $300 all complete, but mine I got for about $150 a couple years ago, and it's in incredible condition for its age. It was a little unusual for a G.I. Joe vehicle to be available for three years because usually they were around for like one or two years and then discontinued on the third year. But in this case, for three years, I think the main reason why they kept the Sky Striker going until 85 was because the gigantic USS flag was released that year and kids needed Sky Strikers to land onto that aircraft carrier. It is a legendary place that many people dream of owning, including myself, but even if I had it, I would have nowhere to put it because that thing is seven feet long. And in case you couldn't tell by now, this vehicle is huge. Like, I had to back away and zoom out just so I can get this plane in full view. And there is a guy in there that's Ace. And he's the pilot that came with this plane. And I'll be doing size comparisons and be looking at him later in the video. Starting at the very front of the plane, there is a rubber nose cone right here. And all the way up to here, there is this long opening canopy that doesn't like to stay out very well. It's like, I mean, it doesn't like to stay up very well. It just has to fall down. But what's neat about this is that these seats can come out and they come with little parachutes. Early releases of the Sky Striker came with two parachutes and later releases only came with one. Taking a look inside the cockpit, there really mu isn't much in there and the detailing on the console is minimal, just a bunch of circles. Nothing too spectacular here, but the rest of the plane totally is. The Air Force sticker here, as well as on the other side of the plane, is upside down and it kind of looks like a pentagram. Maybe the previous owner was a Satanist. Taking a look at the seat I ejected earlier here, I'm going to take Ace off the seat. There is a peg hole for a figure to hook up onto and there is this parachute right here which I have kind of wrapped up with rubber band with a rubber band and once the rubber band is removed it reveals a parachute it's very messy and fiddly and I'm not the biggest fan of this play feature but I can see why a lot of people had fun with it back in the day and it reveals, it's kind of hard to see and it's faded, but there is a bald eagle and it says Sky Striker. How cool is that? When putting the seat back into the plane, it doesn't really peg into anything and it just kind of rests in there. And I've always had a hard time fully folding up this parachute that it kind of takes up a lot of space back here and you can put another figure in the back and this can also eject but I never really put another figure in here because this just takes up a lot of space it kind of squishes the figure so what I like to do is just leave it out a little bit like this so that Ace can fly his plane taking a look at these small missiles underneath the blueprints call these Site 5 Sidewinder Missiles. And as we move here, we get these larger missiles that the blueprints call Site 32 Phoenix Missiles. And underneath, there are these similar looking missiles to the ones up front, and they refer to them as Site 3 Sparrow Missiles. And We'll take a look at the underside a little bit later in the video, and as, if you can note, if you haven't noticed, the sticker on mine here is upside down, which is a little bit annoying, but it is what it is. And now 
this plane is loaded to the brim with stickers. You got a 100 here, rescue, the satanic US Air Force logo, you got the GI Joe logo there. I believe that we need danger jet intake. And we look at the canopy, we got what looks like a kill streak. Along with the kill streak, you got the names Lieutenant Wayne Ruthel and Captain J. Brad Armbruster. Brad J. Armbruster is the real name for Ace. On the other side of the front, there is a gun here, and the blueprints call it the Portside E 41A1 Vulcan 50mm cannon. And when we look up to the top, it is just loaded with so many different labels. It just has so much realism to it. A bunch of walkway stickers, no steps, and you got this red, white, and blue here, and all across here, and once again, the stickers are a little bit misplaced, because right here, there's supposed to be the Air Force sticker, but there's, but, ugh, my tongue stopped working, but there's an Air Force sticker underneath here, which I'll take a look at later. This thing is just so massive. And they got kind of switched up. Now, unlike many G.I. Joe vehicles, this thing has not one, but two removable engine covers. Now, these are a little bit hard to take off, and I'm always scared of breaking them, but I will take the risk and try to take them off to show you the detail underneath with the engine. Just kind of pull on this tab here and it comes off that's one and let's just take off this one too since we just got that one off there we go while I was filming the video I couldn't take them off and it really got me frustrated <laughs> but now I was able to get them off so that's pretty good oh that's not supposed to be there and as promised, I will show you the detail underneath. It's got some really nice engine detail and mechanical detail in there, as well as on the other side, and that is just beautiful. You could just have guys sitting on top of the plane working on the engine, or like, especially if you had the USS flag, it must have had a lot of play value back in the day, and probably still does if you have all that stuff. Oh, and missile fell out, and that's uh, the only problem I have with this toy is that a few of these missiles tend to fall off easily, and when you're looking for one of these, make sure it has all these missiles, make sure it has these, and the parachutes, the chairs, the canopy, and also, at the very back where these thrusters are, they are actually removable. Hold on. And when you remove them, you get this nice detail. Oh, it got really bright. You got this nice detailed turbine. Both of them can be. Well, both of them can be removed. But since this is so big and I have little space to have this tripod mounted, I won't be able to take it out, unfortunately. And you also got some stickers there. So that's really nice. at the back of the plane there is this switch that has stickers showing the open wings and the closed wings now that's a feature I will demonstrate a little bit later the blueprints refer to them these as vertical twin vertical stabilizers good thing I have the blueprints with me I don't have the physical blueprints but I have a picture of it on a second device anyway got this really badass logo right here it reminds me of the Japanese flag with the red Sun and there is an American there's a bald eagle split on there with its claw or talons like facing forward I don't know that's just really cool as a Japanese American I approve this logo on the other side of these top wings there is a 14 ball by star and these are all a single sticker I'm not really sure if these have any meaning to them. Maybe it's a reference to the real-life equivalent, the F-14 Tomcat. Okay, I just did a little bit of research, and it turns out the full name of this vehicle is the Combat Jet Sky Striker 
XP-14F. So that explains those stickers in the back. The wheels of this plane are made of a nice rubber material and this allows this plane to roll very smoothly and I love it. As a bonus, there actually is some text on the wheels. It's a little hard to see, but it says VR258L, no, not L, X600 Sky Striker G.I. Joe. And I've had this plane for a couple of years, and I never noticed this until just now. And now the moment you've all been waiting for, the sliding wings. To do that, you just pull on the switch, and the wings will go back. Oh, and a missile fell out. These missiles tend to fall off, and when you do, the, we the landing gear goes back. This one tends to stick out a little bit. And all these missiles can come off. So you can have them drop bombs and missiles on Cobra Forces. And, oh, a bunch of stuff are falling off right now. And this here, a lot of people mistaken it for a missile, but this is actually a fuel tank. Oh, and the canopy's kind of coming off, so gotta be careful. And here's how everything looks. You still got some really nice detail even underneath the plane. And overall, this is just a really fun play feature, and it's really satisfying. The only problem, however, is getting it back to the landing gear out and having the wings folded out. It's a little tight, so... Oh, now the missile fell out. That's, that's like the most exciting thing in this video. All the missiles keep popping out. Anyway, to get them back, it's actually really tight and a little tricky to get it out. So what I do, I give it the middle finger and the wings go back out. And there you go. Now that we got the Sky Striker out of the way, it's time to look at the included figure Ace. While not a bad figure, I don't think he is that great either, mainly because he doesn't really look like a pilot, he looks more like an astronaut. The figure does have some really nice detail on him. As you can see, there are some tubes and buttons, and I'm sorry about the light going on and off. I do have studio lights, but I am also using a light feature on my camera, but anyway. As you can see, he's got some nice detail here. He's got this, these red tubes here, and he's also got some other red parts here on his pouches on his arms and on his belly. He's got a black belt, not a black belt in martial arts, but his belt is black. Actually, take that back, it looks more like a grayish color, a dark, dark gray. On his, on his ass, it says made in Hong Kong. got all these other features that make him look more like an astronaut than a pilot. I can see these leg parts being used for like a pilot suit, but overall this figure is not my favorite to say the least. He's very simplistic in my opinion. Oh, and he's got some stuff on the back here. And there is a hole for him to peg into the seat and a lot of GI it, oh no a lot if not all vintage GI Joes had a peg at a peg hole like this so they can sit onto vehicle seats or something like that and another nice feature about this is that the top piece of the helmet can come off revealing his face I'm not gonna lie this head sculpt is boring he just looks like a really, he looks like he's about to fall asleep. And I know a lot of GI Joes tend to have neutral expressions on their faces, and that's what I usually like. But I just find this figure to be a little bland. But I'm glad they put in some effort with some bright colors with the orangish reddish colors. Despite the figure being a little bland in my tastes, this figure was never really meant to be placed in the battlefield or driving a tank etc. The main purpose of this guy is to pilot the Sky Striker and sit inside it and just kick all kinds of ass in the air taking down Cobra Rattlers. 
and because of that I can give most of the blandness of this figure a pass. The figure has the average articulation of a vintage G.I. Joe at the time. The head can move side to side, the arms can rotate, they can go out that far, you get a bicep swivel, a bend at the elbow, the o-ring allows for some motion mo uh, movement, and also on my figure, it appears to be a little bit loose. I might need a new one soon, a new o-ring, but it's not as bad as other figures I have. The legs are on ball joints, and they have, and he has a bend at the knee. And as seen earlier in the video, I do have Ace's file card right here. Pause and read if you like. Now for size comparisons, here we have the Black Series Darth Nihilus. My previously reviewed figure, the Aliens Collection Alien Queen. And the 1984 Cobra Water Moccasin. So there you have my review on the 1983 Sky Striker and Ace. And honestly, this thing is... Phenomenal. It's a classic. It's something I highly recommend adding to your collection, but only if you have the money. Tracking one down can complete and unbroken can be a bit of a challenge, as long as well as other G.I. Joe vehicles and playsets. But overall, I just can't get over how beautiful this plane is. It has so much realism, a lot of play value, and it's just so big. It must have blown away so many people back in the day, and it still does to this day. And if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and turn on the notification button. Thank you for watching, and see you on the flip side. Merry Christmas, everybody.